welcome to T Boys TV. We are back again with another hat show, obviously episode 155. And in this one, it is the big game in the relegation battle. A must win. That's how I see it. You know, just had a little recap of their away form as well. They've only actually got two points away this season. So for me, I look at it as a must win. You know, as simple as that, especially if how our performances have been the last couple of you know, games we're showing people that we, you know, deserve to be in this league and all that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, big up to everyone in the chat. Big up to everyone that has been waiting. Uh, appreciate it very much. Um, but, yeah, like always, I'm joined with my dad. How are we, dad? Yeah, all good, mate. You? Yeah, all good. All good. Looking forward to another looting game, you know what I mean? And then after that, we got two very tough tests, you know, obviously Man United. At home, which is another super Sunday for us. Obviously, we had that against Liverpool at home, and then we got Liverpool away. So yeah, I'm looking forward to them games. If I'm being honest, um, so yeah, as well as this one. So let's get into it. So Sheffield United, like I say, looking at them, you know, away they've been terrible. You know, they've got two points all season uh, away from home, and like I say, uh, that was a very controversial one against Aston Villa. If we're being honest, and then. Uh, they obviously got a point away at Brighton, um, which, to be fair, that's that's a good point if we're being honest. But other than that, they've they've lost every every game, um, and yeah, obviously they sit on ten points. You know, obviously they still are the team not to break Derby's record because everyone loves to go on about that. Obviously, as for us, uh, obviously we're seventeenth, uh, twenty points. Obviously, if we do win this and a couple of other results go our way, i.e. Brentford losing, Forest losing, uh, we can actually jump up to 15th because uh, we are two points behind Brentford and obviously a point behind Forest. Obviously, Brentford play at the same time. Uh, Nottingham Forest are the half-five kickoff against Newcastle. Uh, so it's all interesting. Um, and then obviously, if we did win, we would be a point behind Palace as well in 14th. A team who I did have down there, you know, everyone would laugh at me. I'm not laughing now, you know, what I mean, bring out that meme, but um, yeah, no stats going into it, uh, are as follows uh, Luton are unbeaten in four home get uh, home league games against Sheffield United, winning one, drawing three since a 6 3 loss in December 1994. Uh, the Hatters won the last time they hosted the Blades in the top flight, 2-1 in February 1992. Sheffield United lost the reverse fixture of 3-2 against Luton in December. They've not lost both league meetings with the Hatters in a campaign since 1976-77 in the second tier. After scoring 10 goals in their first 12 Premier League matches, uh, 0 0.8 per game, Luton Town have found the net in each of their last 10 games, netting 22 goals across these games, 2.2 per game. Only Tottenham Hotspur are on a longer run of scoring 35 games than the Hatters. And yeah, literally Tottenham, every game I watch them, they're, they're, you know, they're scoring. So that's pretty mad from us. Uh, Sheffield United have uh, lost four different Premier League games this season by five or more goals, uh, having only done uh, so once before this season, uh, which was a 5-0 loss. Uh, versus Leicester in March 2021. They are only the sixth team to have uh, four plus five goal defeats in a season, along with Swindon in 1993 to 94, Barnsley in 1997 to 8, and then Derby in 2007 to uh, 8, Wigan in 2009 to 10, and Norwich in 2021 to 22. And then the last one on this section, Luton Town have scored four goals in each of their last two Premier League games, a 4-0 win over Brighton and 4-4 draw with Newcastle. The last uh, newly promoted top side to score four-plus goals in three uh, games in a row was Sunderland in March 1977. So, yeah, interesting there. And for the first time, I'd say this season, we are the favourites as well. Uh, you know, I, I cast my mind back even to when we played Burnley at home. I wouldn't have said we were the favourites in that you know, for it to people's eyes because, you know, a lot of people are then finishing a lot higher than they look like where they're going to finish. Um, uh, you know, so this is the first This is the first one and we're quite heavily the favourites in this one, which, again, it goes back down to what I said, you know, it's, it is sort of expected that we are, you know, with how our last couple of games have been, you know, Sheffield United have been very poor away. Um, so, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. But, yeah, there's that going into it. Uh, and then, obviously, 
A bit more about Sheffield United. Uh, Wilder made his return to Bramall Lane in December, helping them take three points against Brentford and draws with Aston Villa and West Ham United. Ollie McBurney has more goals and assists combined than any other Blades player in the Premier League this season, although he hasn't ended on the winning side in any game he has scored or assisted in. Um, Sheffield United have lost 29 of their last 35 away Premier League matches. Across those 35 games, the Blades have only scored twice in two games, one of which was last time out on the road, uh, 3-2 defeat to Palace. Uh, last time the town won both league games against the Blades was the 1976-77 season, like I mentioned earlier. Rob Edwards going into it. He said, we go into this match expecting a difficult game, a difficult battle with both teams fighting for their lives. We've been moving in the right direction for a long time. Everyone is trying to improve. Uh, which we've said all season, we're becoming more of a threat and that's because of the performances and our work in training. We've been more aggressive in our pressing and a lot of our improvement has come from that. Our on-the-ball performances have been better, which has given us more positive overall performances. There's no easy game in the Premier League and if we step off it, then we'll be punished. We want to win because it's a big game like they all are. We don't go into any game saying it's must-win. Maybe... Down the line, it may have to be like that, but right now it isn't. Uh, obviously, the last time we met, 3 2, a very uh, memorable game, obviously, on the Boxing Day. Uh, and then, team news going into it. Annoyingly, uh, Menji has uh, picked up an ankle knock in training on Thursday and will be a doubt for the game on Saturday. You know, it's a bit of an annoying one, you know, obviously, come back, return, didn't he, from, you know, the, the Everton game. Um, and we thought, you know, he's back in now, uh, but he's got injured, which is annoying. Um, and then obviously Hashioka is still adjusting to the squad, uh, so it'll be too soon for him again. But I'm sure, like the Newcastle game, he'll, he'll be there again watching on. Uh, and then obviously Brown and Kabore were back against Newcastle. Obviously Brown come on, um, so they'll be obviously available for selection. And then Anderson's still out, uh, and the Kamba remains a long-term absent see at this stage but I did see I believe a picture of him earlier and he seems like he's uh, back in training by himself you know doing individual stuff at the moment so obviously that's good to see that you know, gives us more options you know when he does eventually return officials for this one uh, Chris Kavanagh uh, 72 yellow cards and two red cards have been handed out by Kavanagh across his 18 games this season we last had a game ran by him when we hosted Wigan at Kenilworth Road in the Championship last season. If I can remember rightly, that was a very poor nil-nil draw. Um, well, I remember it as a result that we, you know, it weren't great, you know, considering we were at home and they were, you know, in the relegation battle and that sort of thing. Um, and then VAR will be Paul Tierney. Uh, and that is that, really, upon that. So, after saying all of that, how are you feeling going into this one, Dad? Well, yeah, I'm... Um... Definitely confident, as I think we should be. Um, I think we we are showing that we're levels above, of, uh, you know, them definitely, um, and and that's why we knew that potentially we had the chance to survive in the, in Premier League in the first place because of the team spirit, the togetherness. It's clear there for everyone to see, and that's where a lot of clubs go wrong. You know, they think they've got promoted, so they've got that divine right to be there and they start getting punished. But, they, you know, it's, it's how you run. So, yeah, I'm definitely confident. Um, we were on form at the moment. We've been scoring goals for fun. Um, they've had a couple, a few heavy, really heavy defeats. I don't think we've had any yet, have we, really? Um, we've got the players to do it. So it's also uh, we can relax a little bit, you know. Yeah, we're saying it's a must win, but the pressure's off of us a little bit because of how good we've been. You know, we expect to win, but I still don't think it'd be the end of the world if, if you know they we they just uh, pulled a result out of the bag, you know. Because it, because for them it is, it, for them I'd say it definitely one hundred percent is a must-win game. Whereas for us it's not; it's like eighty percent, seventy percent. We just want to because we know the other teams that are playing each other, and 
you know, a chance to push us further up the table, you know, but we'll see. But I'm, I am confident and we'll do expect us to get a result. Yeah, no, as for me, I'm fairly confident as well, you know, even with, you know, Menji being out and that sort of thing, because, you know, I look at it, like you say, the last couple of results we've had, you know, they've been very, you know, it's hard to keep them performances going, you know, in the sense of scoring four goals, you know, we know that consecutively or even three times in a row. But I just feel, you know, being at home, we've, we've, we've kicked on now and you, you see in the last couple of weeks that we, you know, we are, you know, in this league for a reason that we should be in it you know sort of thing so yeah i'm i'm fairly confident i'll say looking at their away record as well you know even at the start of the season you know as much as i say it is a must win game you know even at the start of the season we would have i said this you know on the last hat show we would have targeted this as a game to try and get three points anyway because it's a newly promoted team you know alongside us as well you know at home so it's it's one of them you know the likes of them burnley you know we had approached them as must wins at home as well so it's one of them uh but let's go through some comments uh big up to everyone inside big up to luca he says big up uh big up to harry he says evening hats with a goat emoji big up to yourself mate uh big up to steven uh he says big up ties six point oh uh, yeah no absolutely uh big up does that as well big up to paul um Everton and Forest should defo lose this weekend. Wolves uh, will probably beat Brentford as well. I mean, Everton, you know, you would say they would because they are obviously away at the Etihad. Um, Forest, you never know, I'll be honest, because they are at home. You know, if there's a way at Newcastle, well, I'll say even if there's a way at Newcastle, look what they've done, you know, a couple of weeks ago. The difference is the guy who did score the hat-trick, uh, Chris Wood, he is not available apparently. I'm hearing so, you know that is a benefit for Newcastle for sure. Uh, and then Brentford, yeah, they they're awful. Way right? they lost their last five, you know. And Wolves are on very good form. Obviously, they beat uh, Chelsea away four two. Right, Chelsea, are, you know, very inconsistent, but still, you know, getting four goals away at Stamford Bridge. Not even the top teams do that often, you know. I know Man City did, but other than that, you know, even then they didn't win the game. You know what I mean? So it's one of them. Um, yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. I, I warned people about Palace, you know, especially if them keeping Roy Hodgson, which I knew they would for a while. You know, if they sack him, then it can be a different different scenario. But for now, I'm, I'll am i stick by what I say. Uh, hi, Ty Dads. I'm still nervous on this game. I'm hoping Bernie's not playing. Yeah. Because I can tell he will try and frustrate us. You know, we don't, we don't like him, you know. Um, but We'll see what goes on. We'll see what goes on there. Uh, Jackie says she don't like being a favourite. Yeah, I hear that. You know, we're not obviously the favourites often. So, like I say, it's probably the first time I would say this season we are the favourites in a game. Because, like I say, even Burnley at home, I just feel because everyone had high expectations for them, or majority of people anyway, you know, they'd have probably said them to be the favourites in that. And we like being the underdogs usually, don't we, Dad? So, it's one yeah. of them. So, yeah, yeah I understand that. You've got to remember that we have beat them away already, you know. Yeah, maybe you could say we're fortunate slightly with the away go uh, that own goal, sorry. But we caused them issues. That was the beginning of it, I think. The beginning of the turnaround where we just started, you know, putting more pressure on teams and, and changing slightly and going for it, being brave. That's what Rob Edwards says a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the time. And he's now doing that with his tactics. And it, and it has been working. Um, so, uh, and, you know, they played Burnley and other rivals and they was at, uh, was it away? Yeah, yeah. five more, yeah. Cr you know, crucial kind of game. And that's a good fact, yeah. So I'll tell you what, if, if Burnley isn't playing and they have, because he's there, like I say, he's been involved in this, that and the other. He's, he's the only player that plays like, our team does if that makes sense mm -hmm. you know like they haven't got that connection and people whoever you know Gus Hamer and that's signed for it and thinking I'll be back in the championship again next season do you know what I mean and and things like that but I'll tell you if McBurney ain't playing at all it, it, I think that's key I think, yeah um, that, that could uh turn it right around no I agree 
you know, you look at games over the years where we drew one all with him. I remember he scored, didn't he? So he, he sort of, you know, does have that record against us in scoring, which is another reason I don't really like him because it is a bit frustrating. Um, but yeah, uh, first game, Luton going phase prem this season, scared. Yeah, it's hopefully it's one, you know, like we say, where it doesn't get to the to the players and that too much, which I'm sure it won't. You know, Rob Edwards seems like he's composed, you know, and said stuff to the players in the sense of, you know, just don't put too much pressure on yourselves, essentially. Um, so, yeah, big up to Jamie. Uh, he says, come on, Blades, tomorrow. Can't see nothing. Coming home with nothing. So he's not very uh, confident, as you can tell there. And apparently he is fit. But Bernie for tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, no. And that's another reason we don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, moving on to the lineups, uh, what we go with in this game. So obviously, like I say, Menji's not going to be available. Um, obviously, Hashioka, it's still a bit too early for him, which makes sense. So for me, I'm going to go Kaminsky in goal, obviously. Um, you know, hopefully it's. A much better performance in Newcastle when it comes to distribution wise. Um, and then back three, I'm gonna go Bell in the left centre back. Uh, and then I'm gonna go Osho in the middle. And then I guess it's probably gonna be Burke uh starting because of the Menji news. And then the two CDMs, I'm gonna go obviously, you know who they're gonna be, Barkley and Laconga. Uh and then on the left side, I'm going to go with Doughty, um, who did obviously score the last time against Sheffield United as well. Uh, and then the right side, obviously, even if Hashioka was available, I'd still go with Chio because, like I say, you know, I feel it is a game we need to need to win, of course. So, you know, stick with sort of what works. And, he, you know, he was up there for man of a match against Newcastle as well for me. So I'd go with him. Uh, ideally, obviously, going forward, you know, when Hashioka does adapt in, you would want to see him, you know, higher up. But for now, go with him there. He's doing well there as well. And then front three, hmm, what would I go with in this? So the the two, you know, Elijah and Morris, of course. Now, it's just the other one for me. You know, do you go with Townsend? Uh, do you go with Clark? It's interesting. Do you even... Well, this one probably won't happen, but it's another option. Do you go with Chong? I mean, me personally, I'll probably... Do you know what? For this one, I'm going to go Clark. I'm going to start Clark again. I wouldn't be surprised if it maybe was Townsend, uh, but I'll go Clark. You know, I feel this could be a game where he could get on the score sheet, if if I'm being honest, or, or get an assist or something like that. And hopefully he does, you know, because he was very unlucky not to do it against Brighton. Obviously, the, the disallowed goal. He played really well in that game as well, considering that's his second, you know, full Premier League game, or you know, for starting, shall I say? So yeah, that's the lineup I'll go with uh, in this one. So Kaminsky in goal, uh, back three of Bell, Osho, and Burke, uh, Barkley and Laconga as the more defensive midfielders. Uh, Doughty on the left, Chio on the right, Morris uh, on that left side, Deepa, Elijah up top, and then Clark on the right side of that. So yeah, that's my lineup. Uh, Dad, your lineup. Um, mine's basically it, it, it won't load for some reason. Ah, no worries. Um, but it is basically the same as yours, apart from um, Clark and Townsend. Swap them. So yeah, everyone else is the same. Um, you know, I'd feel you know Kabore is back, but you could start him. You know, we could start. We could, you know, we could start Brown. We could, we could, you know, move players around. Like that's how confident I feel. But I don't think we will. But I do feel that Townsend will start because he's he's been sub for the last couple of games. Give Clark a little bit of a rest. He's played quite a few games recently, including the FA Cup games. Um, Chio, yeah, I I could see Kabore. Um, I fancied that you know the Japanese, uh, the new signing to start, but then I read that he wasn't ready, so that's not gonna happen. And obviously, we've um got a 24 man squad, it's been announced. Obviously, there's still room for another player, 
Um, so it could be interesting to see if we sign another player after the transfer window on a free. Do you know what I mean? That'd be quite interesting. Um, so yeah, and Burke will be a straight swap for Menji. Um, it could be some changes in midfield, but no, I don't think so. I think we're going to go pretty, pretty strong and just play the game. I think Sheffield United would come to frustrate us, you know? Yeah. And, and, and slow the game down and basically do what we've done to other teams. We've just got to be coy about it, just make them work for the ball and then just rely on our, you know, it's, I think, you know, Chio has been doing what he's been doing against teams like Man City, Liverpool, uh, you know, then against Sheffield United, he should, he should be running right. Um, is he up against Norrin and Davis? That would be uh, pretty interesting. If, you... if he starts, yeah, he should be. Uh, because he famously left our club for to go to Stoke on loan after he was on loan to us because he, he wanted the club with a bigger ambition or something. he come out with some mm. stupid ass comments and he's, he's not. He, yes, played in the Premier League. I think when, when they got promoted before, I mean, if yeah. first went up, but yeah. See how that goes, mate. But um, yeah, McBurney, I, I like it because it'll be feisty. You know, they'll be angry of, of, of the last result. So, but I'm just confident that we can we can do it, and we'd have to put in such a poor performance or play like we did in the cup against Bolton at home. But I don't think there's any danger of that. It's Premier League, they're set differently, you know. So, yeah, my lineup's pretty much the same as yours. Yeah, I, I love to say, I can see Townsend back in. You know, it makes sense because he hasn't started the last couple of games. Like you say, Clark has played a lot, so I could see it. Um, but yeah, definitely, I would. I'll be honest. Unless Clark plays like really well tomorrow, scores or something, I'd probably, you know, because of the games coming up, you know, the teams that we are playing after, I'd definitely start him in the name games, mm -hmm. especially like when we go Liverpool away. You know, Man United as well. That could be a good one as well. So, yeah, that is that uh, when it comes to lineups. Uh, so, yeah, let's go through uh, your comments. Uh, Stephen says, same as Newcastle, just Burke from Nengi. Yeah, exactly. So he's on the same wavelength as me there. Uh, this is Harry's. Kaminsky, Osho, Bell, Burke. Uh, it's obviously the same defence, uh, which obviously we all expect. Barkley and Lukonga. Uh, Doughty, Chio, as the players out wide. Chong, Morris and Elijah. Uh, Chong would tear Sheffield United apart with Chio uh and set the goals up for elijah and morris now chonk yeah chonk could be a really good player to, to do this game i just don't think he will start he is a shout though he is a shout and i hear why you say it i do definitely want to see him come on you know i don't want it to be brown this time you know no disrespect but i just feel with him coming back you know early i just don't feel that was the right change against newcastle you know he's very rusty as well kept giving the ball away whereas i feel you know i obviously said it on here you know, I think I might have said it on the vlog for a moment as well. You know, for me, I'd be bringing someone like Townsend or Chong because of the impact Chong's made in games and then Townsend because of the experience. You know, out of them two, I didn't really mind who it was as long as it was one of them sort of thing. But, um, yeah, no, potentially, you know, I do expect Chio to definitely be that threat. It goes back to what you said, Doug. If he can do what he's done against opposition teams that are you know, better than Sheffield United, then you'd expect him to continue that sort of thing. Um, and, and be very influential in the plays. So, yeah, there we go with that. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, but, yeah, score predictions. Here's that time. Score predictions. So, Dad, you say you're feeling very confident. We're at home. You know, we've got two very, very tough games coming up after this. What is your score prediction in this one? Um, I think it's... it's it could be a frustrating game, but I just think we're on fire at home. This could be a bit of a statement for us. Um, they basically have to play out of their skin, and this is the real, real, real test for them. I, I think they're under a hell of a lot of pressure, to be honest with you. Um, I think it. I think it'll start off quiet, but then I think it'll just show that you know. Why, why we've definitely got a massive chance of staying in the Premier League. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a three-one Luton win. Nice. 
I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, as for my score prediction, I think it's going to be one of them games where it's going to be a frustrating first half for us to watch because they're going to make it, you know, they're going to try and make it difficult, you know, hit us on the break, be very, you know, defensive at times. But then I feel Rob Edwards will, will you know, get into the players at half time and I think we'll come out and we'll just, you know, be on fire. Similar to how we started against Brighton, something like that, you know, in the sense of the pressing and, and playing much better. Uh, in the second half. So I'm going to go 2-0 Luton uh, in this one. Back us to get a clean sheet as well. So, yeah. That is that. Uh, score, goal scorers, Dad. Obviously, your three goal scorers for us. What do I mean? I, 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 want, I want to say Morris Hattrick. But um, might be a bit optimistic. But I'd love to see that. Uh, I, I definitely do think he'll score. Um, Nigel, more likely as well. And what well, well, I'd like to see Burke get a goal. Burke, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Obviously, he did get one against Everton, didn't he, in the cup? So, yeah, my goal scorers, I'm going to go Elijah, and hopefully, he's able to break that record. Obviously, he would have done it against Bournemouth, obviously, got abandoned, as we all know. Uh, so, hopefully, he does break that record. Um, obviously, you know, played score three consecutive for us. A very long time in the top flights. Uh, and then my other goal scorer, I'm gonna go Chio. I've got a feeling he's gonna score. Um, I, I got a feeling he might even get a score and get an assist, but we'll see what goes on. Hopefully he does, because I started him in my FPL this week. Stupidly, I didn't do that last week. So yeah, I've done that this week. Um, uh, but yeah, your score predictions. Uh obviously do get them in if you haven't already. Uh, this is Harry's overall thoughts on the game as well. Says first half will be nervy with both teams and KG. Second half, I expect Luton to really turn it up and break Sheffield United down. Yeah, exactly. So we're on the same sort of approach, you know, of how the game's going to go. Um, in our opinions, Jamie, as much as he's uh, not overly confident, obviously he's still back in his team. He's gone three-two to Blade, so that would be a revenge, really. And obviously it's three-two when we played him. Uh, obviously the last game at their ground, uh, Jackie's gone four-one. She loves that. Love that. We know Jackie can be good at predictions, so imagine if that happened. That would yeah. be not. Now, that would be a proper statement. And, you know, that's uh, four goals consecutively, and then it would have broke that record that I said earlier. So that would have been, that, you know, that would be nuts if, if that happens. Uh, Paul's on the same wavelength as you, Dad. He's gone with a 3-1 as well. Uh, and then Harry's prediction, he's gone 2-0 Luton. Fairly a boring first half, but Rob Edwards' half-time team talk would be crucial. Elijah double. Nice. Nice. Imagine that. So that would be six goals for Elijah in three games, if that happened. That would be nuts, wouldn't it? So, you know what I mean? Elijah should be getting called up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then goal scorers for Jackie. Uh, she's got Morris, Barkley, and Clark. I'm guessing one of them's to get two, because uh, obviously he did play four goals. Uh, and then Paul's gone with Barkley and Morris uh, to get the goals in this one. So there you go. That is the Sheffield United preview. Obviously wrapped up, Dad. Any final things you'd like to say before we wrap up? No, this should be a game that we should, we should really enjoy. We should, you know, obviously if we lose, we probably be, we will be annoyed because. I feel that for us to lose the game, we'd have to we'd have to be absolutely rubbish or just unlucky, and I just can't see it happening. You know, it's a good thing that we're playing, and you know, at the time we are, where we're quite established, we know where they are, we know we, we've beat what like, and we won't be cocky. You know what I mean? We won't we'll, we'll still approach it like in a certain way. So I think that's that, I think that's key for us. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, enjoy it. See where yeah. we are at the end of the, you know, um, end, of, end of the day. See if we are at 15th and closer and this, that, and the other. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of us will be uh, looking at that 5.30 game straight away because, like I say, Forrest are involved in that. And obviously, if they do lose and we win, it's a good opportunity to go above them, like I say. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, Harry says, thoughts on Barkley to England, lads. People still being quite delusional, saying Phillips and Henderson over him. Strikers for Euros, Kane, Elijah, imagine. Solanke and one more, can't think. The thing with England is, as much as we'd love, you know, Elijah to be in it, there's a lot of 
strikers, you know, English strikers doing well in the Premier this season. Obviously, like you said there, Solanke's one of them. Um, who else is up there? There's, there's, I'm sure there's another one. Can't think. Ollie Watkins, he might be up there, if I'm correct. Um, but my thoughts on it, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I hear why people say Henderson, because, you know, he has got that... Uh, you know, he has got that experience with the team and that. And, you know, he obviously is a big influence, but no way Phillips for me. You know, no way Phillips. You know, I do find it stupid. You know, you look at games like last week. You've got, you know, Gareth Southgate watching Ajax instead. You know, when Luton Newcastle had, I think it's about eight English players, four on each team or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just pretty crazy. But... Like I say, if Lyja does get up there, it may be like you said that if he does end up on like 15 goals, then he definitely deserves within a shout, I would say. But I just feel, you know, the strikers will be a bit harder because, like I say, Solanke, he is currently the top scorer out of the English uh, strikers in the Premier League. Obviously, I think Watkins is up there or he's up there with a lot of contributions anyway. So difficult there, but I definitely would say uh, Barkley over Phillips any day of the week. You know, for, for sure. Um, you know, ever since I watched that England-Germany game with with Alex, you know, and Alex weren't convinced with him, you know, I understand why. Because it's just, you know, sideways, backwards, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just not, you know, Barkley will get on the ball and try and make things happen. Do you know what I mean? So, it's interesting. But then again, I've seen some Luton fans, you know, say they'd like to, you know, have him sort of off the radar so he's not getting noticed for as good as he sort of has been sort of thing and, you know, sort of wrap him up in, in cotton wool so he don't get injured or anything like that. But, I don't know, I just feel, you know, if someone does deserve the opportunity, it's definitely, definitely Barkley for sure. Like I say, Elijah, depends how many goals he gets, but I just feel it will be a bit more difficult there because, you know, like I say, Solanke, how well he's doing, Watkins as well and that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, anything you'd like to add on this, Dad? Do you know what? I think if it, if it, if it was a different manager, and I think he would he would get in even if he's a wild card. But Southgate's just not like he consistently ignores players like Ward Prowse. Yeah, he's another one that should be in. Yeah, I've said that. And and you know Barkley's an infinite Doughty, for instance, gets loads of assists. Now he won't get into that team. Also because he doesn't really play with wingers like that. He wants mm. someone who proper defend. So yeah. Um, yeah, Barkley like definitely deserves his stats prove prove it. You know, we've seen how good he is, and you know he does look world class when he's on the ball. He does. He looks like he could just slot into to like a Spanish team. You know, Barcelona. The way he's playing, let's be honest. It's true. Uh, he very rarely loses the ball. Apparently, I've heard that he's, he's had the most shots, like a, a percentage rate rating this season. Right, he's had twenty percent shots. He's had this. He's, he's the highest one. And, but you see it. You think of all the shots he's had. He scored a few goals as well. Um, so yeah. Um, you know, Phillips is more of a the CDM, isn't he? Mm. That's not really barked his natural position but yeah obviously like that was the case but for me it's over henderson but henderson's captain yeah he's gone to ajax now and i see why he's gone and watched him because obviously it, when he was in saudi he was it, he probably didn't really have, have the energy to play because it was probably too easy or just not do you know what i mean not good enough and yeah he's gonna watch him but no one knows really that other people weren't watching our game. People under the radar, you know, his scouts and stuff. Because it, it would be um, silly to think that he's not in contention. He's got the experience as well. For me, that's a yeah, vital. That's the he's, thing. He's played numerous. You know, Elijah wouldn't get that because he's 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 never played international football. Barkley has. Barkley's play. The reason he got selected in the first place is because of how he's playing now. He's got more experience. He holds on to the ball for longer, things like that. Like even even as a wild card, even just come on late and like helping the game and that. I think I, you know he's a proper English player as well. You know, like Gask. You know, from back in the day and that. So yeah, 
just for that reason, why wouldn't you play? If he if he carries on to the end of the season, how how can you not even consider him? And like I've said before, if if, if people get injured, who knows? Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing I could see. It come down to that. Uh, yeah, obviously he can play for Nigeria if he chooses to, which I, I'll be honest, I probably think he will. Yeah, I don't really know who their strikers are at the moment. Obviously, yeah. I know in the Afghan they got to the final, haven't they? So, but you know, I think he'd have a good chance, good chance there. Definitely, you know, more of a chance in England, especially like you say, that with with Southgate. Um, yeah, no, I know we're talking about that. Nations League group, we've actually got Ireland in our group, so we're going to be up against Chio. Uh, our group is is pretty. Uh, if you're an England fan that goes to a lot of the games, you actually like some of the away days. So obviously Ireland, obviously that one might kick off a little bit, but you know. But we got that. We got Finland and we got Greece. Greece is a, a nice place. So that'd be you know a nice away day. I'll tell you that. Um, so yeah, that's our group for the Nations League. So I weren't overly interested, but I see it last night, and I see that we're going to be up against Chio. So that's going to be a uh, it's going to be interesting because Chio is obviously one of the the main players for Ireland, so he's, he's guaranteed to to get picked. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, I hope Southgate's gone after the Euros. The only thing for me would be if we get rid of him, actually do even worse. Uh, I hope manager a better style. The thing, is, the thing that annoys me, right? Plays def- defensive when we got better attack. You know, we're better at going forward. That's the thing that frustrates me. You know, I don't even care if we had. You know, say for example, like how Mourinho plays, and it's not the greatest football, but you win. You know, I wouldn't mind if he actually done that, but he just does it like you look at the game like the Euro final, right? He sits back after we score and we're just asking for it. You know, it's yeah. like us when we sit back at times this season. You know, we're sort of asking for it. You know, so yeah, that's that's the thing for me. But apparently, I've I've heard he's going to walk anyway, and I heard that last season. So we'll see what happens. It's not um, dynamic. No, that's the thing. Uh, Osherman is up front. Yeah, okay, he's really good. But I don't know. They might even play two up front. They play two up front. I tell you what, if he if he got to play alongside Osherman, he's a player I rate quite highly. Obviously, he's at Napoli. That would be uh be pretty good. Yeah, Greece. Yeah, it's a nice place. I've been there. But uh, yeah, that is that. So for the Hat Show, obviously episode one hundred and fifty five. So yeah, big up me and my dad will be back again with another vlog from home tomorrow. I mean, we'll be back again with it. Uh, obviously, I did say about trying to get a Sheffield United fan on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he had to pull out today, uh, early, you know, this morning. But he said he will do a reaction uh, after the game. So, obviously, do appreciate that and that sort of thing. And then, yeah, we'll be back again either on Monday or Tuesday uh, with a reaction to this. And then, obviously, we are playing on Sunday uh, next week. Obviously, like I say, Super Sunday. So, yeah, we'll be back again with a hat show for a preview. We'll do it on Friday because I know even previous games on Sunday, you know, team news and that has still come out on the Friday. So we'll do it on the, uh, like I say, on the, on the Friday. Obviously, I am going to a neutral game as well on the Saturday. So I can't really do the Saturday, to be honest. So we'll do it on the Friday. And then, yeah, watch along to that game. Obviously, I will be with Harry. Do you know what I mean? And then, obviously, next week, uh, obviously, we've got Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure if we'll do separate hat shows then because it is quite a quick turnaround. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes with that sort of thing. So, yeah, big up to everyone that's tuned in. Um, we are currently on eight likes. So obviously, do smash a like if you haven't already. Again, I know a lot of people watch this back on playback. I have seen that we have got a new subscriber in the stream as well. So, do appreciate that. And, uh yeah, obviously follow me across the other channel as well, uh, T Boys TV Extra, if you haven't already. And then yeah, follow me across all the socials. Obviously, link to them are all in the description as well. And like I say, we're back again with a vlog from home tomorrow. So yeah, do tune into that when that releases. And like I say, a Sheffield United fan will be doing a reaction as well. So obviously, do check that out as well. And yeah, obviously, Nightbot has obviously put it in the chat as well. Uh, the extra channel, you just click onto it. Boom subscribe simple as that so yeah big up to everyone have a good rest of your evening and until tomorrow we will see you in a bit take care and peace up the town